soon to return. Hamashiach Yahawashah. Hallelujah. I know we got uh, this pagan day coming up. Hmm. And, um, you know, I'm just going to mention a couple of things just real quick before I go into the lesson. Um, and I know Elders of Quran is going to break some things out uh, to that effect, you know, so-called Mother's Day. I just want to mention, you know, when you think about Mother's Day, and we know the pagan origins, and when you go into the scriptures, you know, Jeremiah 10, 1, not to learn the way of the heathen. Matter of fact, grab that real quick. What y'all people are doing. But upon the meditation, I was thinking, I mean, how are you going to honor your mother one day right. you know what I'm saying if if you thought that this was something that you should be doing now we know that you shouldn't be celebrating no heathen practices anyway but if in the understanding you're going to honor your mother one day your mother should be mad at you and most of the mothers out here they are not mothers that are noteworthy of any honor because they themselves are practicing the heathen practices of this nation, man. You know, so, you know, even Martin Luther King got a month, you know, and he didn't do a damn thing for us. <laughs> but get us into more trouble with this man by, you know, integration. So how much more would you be supposed to reverence? You just said the commandments. Said them in Hebrew. One of the Ten Commandments in Exodus 20 was what? To honor your mother and father. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Now, when was that supposed to happen? Every Sunday, once a year? That was the culture. But you would give honor and reverence to someone that was noteworthy to be honored. Somebody that would keep the law, statutes, and commandments. I know a lot of brothers and sisters would be upset. But, you know, our mothers and their practices don't deserve no honor. They don't reverence the Most High. How are you going to honor your mother above the Most High? How are you going to reverence? How are you going to do what your mother asks you to do? A lot of our mothers uh, have behaved wickedly when it comes before the Most High. But you're going to give your mother honor above the Most High. You're going to have a lot of men on tomorrow bringing roses and candies and flowers to their mothers. Gonna reverence their mothers, but you won't do nothing the most high tell you to do. That's female apotheosis. That's the worship of women. You worshiping a woman, which is a heathen practice. We know the queen of heaven. That's what the ancient Israelites fell into that wicked, wicked practice. Mother Earth. You want to worship Mother Earth. Where in the scriptures to tell you to do that? But all these mothers, they, they go tell you to go to church. All these mothers go to church. They're going to go to, they're going to have a Mother's Day service on Sunday. Read Jeremiah 10. So I'm just, you know, just bring a little bit to lock you. Go ahead. The book of Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse 1. Hear ye the word which Yahweh, or the Most High, speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Most High, learn not the ways of the heathen. So this practice, and all you got to do is look it up. There are going to be many brothers that bring this out in the origin of Mother's Day and how heathen it is, and Elder Zaquan is going to be bringing it to you, yeah. in, in one of his books, he brings us out beautifully. We're supposed to give honor where honor is due. We're supposed to do what again, Read. Thus saith the Most High, learn not the ways of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. Come on. For the heavens, for the heathen are dismayed at them. Are dismayed. Read on. Verse 3. This is what the heathen is supposed to be dismayed. They're confused about what even those practices that they do. They're, they move with that frequency, with the luminaries. Right. That's how they get down. We're not supposed to learn that. Read. For the customs of the people are vain. They're vain. And we know the word means empty. So, you know, we're going to find our people doing a bunch of vain abominations, man, on tomorrow, getting ready all hyped up about this wicked holiday that only puts more money in the so-called white man's pocket, man, while he can further oppress you. That's all. You ain't got no money as it is, and then you're going to run out and try to get your mother something, and you've been wicked all year. 
<laughs> You've been wicked all year. And some of your mothers are like, damn, he, he coming by. This is the only time I see that Negro. <laughs> you see, you've been wicked all year, and now you want to give your mother something. You're supposed to honor your mother every day according to the scriptures, man. Honor your mother and father. But you're supposed to give honor where that honor is due. All right? Now, I'm not telling you you're not supposed to respect your parents. We understand there's some things that's just called common decency, man. You know, we should have common decency, and you're supposed to give respect to your parents. That's, that's, that goes across the board. It should go without saying. But when we see the relationships, we see now with the male missing in the household, you got the daughters that are being raised up by these women, and they, they more like sisters. You know, I let my children know, according to the scriptures, I'm not supposed to be your friend above your father. I'm not going to befriend you. You know, I'm your father. I'm here to instruct you. That's my job. You know, we're not the same. You got mothers and daughters are going to clubs together. You got mothers and sons going to clubs together. Yeah, I partied with my mother the other day. What the hell? What's wrong with our people, man? We learn. What? Well, read it again, Jeremiah 10. One. Learn not the customs. For verse 2 the says, ways. Thus saith the Most High, learn not the way of Who the Who said people. it? Who said it? Thus saith the Most High. The, but you love the Most High, right? You serve Him. You're going to serve Him on Sunday. You going over there to, on Sunday? We're gonna have a Mother's Day service <laughs> with Mother's Day cake. It's gonna be wonderful. We're gonna see where that comes from. Read. Learn not the way of the heathen. Of the heathen. Now this is in uh, Elders of Quan. Once again, another bestseller. <laughs> Elders of Quan. He got another one of these books. Uh, the Holiday Hustle: Controlling the Black Mind and Finances. And we're gonna see here where it talks about, he breaks it down, Mother's Day. Now, did you know in ancient Rome, the holiday of matronalia was celebrated each year at the beginning of March? None do under the sun. This annual festival of women, which is female apotheosis. We ain't supposed to worship no woman. You're supposed to serve the most high power. And him only shall you serve. This annual festival of women was held in honor of Juno, Lucian Anna, a goddess who watched over married women and those in childbirth. No wonder the black women feel the church and they love Mother's Day. Because they want to be in control. And this 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 deity helps them to do that. It gives them that before. We know that these are not powers at all. They're empty. They're nothing. But it's the mindset. It's the mentality of our people. She was in charge of newborn infants, and a woman in labor might make offerings to her so that she would have a safe delivery of a healthy child. Gifts were exchanged, and everyone treated the ladies. And when you go back to the word lady, lady go back to a woman of the night. Mm -hmm. That's right. Or a harlot. That's right. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to true service to the most high, our women have been harlots. They have not been practicing. And some have been literal harlots. All right? I know they're not going to like that. And this ain't going to preach well on Sunday. But this ain't Sunday. <laughs> All right? So <laughs> this ain't church. And a woman in labor might make offers to her so that she would have a safe delivery of a healthy child. Gifts were exchanged and everyone treated the ladies exceptionally well on this particular day. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going to go on tomorrow. We ain't going to be able to tell none of these women nothing. They right. stepping up in the church with that tight dress on and still being modest apparel. Right. Tell them what we saw today. Oh, it was horrible. Tell them what you saw today. Uh, what you saw too. I wasn't looking. <laughs> but the thing is, yeah, it was horrible. It made me mad, man, how our people are dressed today and uh, how a father would allow his daughter to, uh, even though they graduated from a, a university, but you ain't learned just common decency. Our father would be holding hand in hand with a, a young woman who's exposed and not in modest apparel. That's a shame. I, I, that's embarrassing. Our people just lost it. But anyway, it was a bit like a woman's version of Saturnalia. So that was the worship. We know Saturnalia dealing with the worship of the sun. So these are heathen practices. Later on, Matronalia evolved into Mother's Day in Europe and was shifted to the fourth Sunday of Lent. 
During the Middle Ages, those who had moved away from the home would return on this day to their mother church, mm, isn't that mm. visiting with their families who still remained in the village. So we see all this, the pagan roots, and it all has to do with worship, the worship of deities, synonymous with the church, which by definition, the, the church is a place where the ignorant are gathered, mm -hmm. the ignorant and the unlearned. It goes back to the words uh, Circe or Circe. Anyway, let's go into a little bit more. Many of us are led to believe or under the assumption, not us that are Israelites, but those of our people who are Israelites and don't know who they are, of the many aspects of how love and affection is shown. One particular way society has intentionally shown and taught us through many generations is to acknowledge your mother during one particular day, that's what I was just talking about, mm -hmm. on the calendar year, which happens to always be every second Sunday of the month of May, according to today's Roman Julian calendar. Isn't that something? Yeah, you act like you only you wrote this, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how you know it's by the spirit. Because you, when you hear it, you're like, man, it's all crazy. You know? <laughs> In all actuality, Mother's Day dates back to ancient cultures in Greece and Rome. In Uh, Hilaria, or the, the Queen of Heaven, known as the Mother Gods, Rhea, the wife of Cronus, or Ray, I guess it's R-H-E-A. Similarly, a three-day Roman festival in mid-March called Hilaria. Now notice how this is kind of, it's a, they do this for three days, when you really think about it. Because everybody on so-called Friday, they start thinking about, I gotta get my mother's they give people start that shopping, yep. Mother's Day sales, yep. all that stuff. Right. It's a boost to the economy through our people's ignorance, man. Right. So anyway, it's something that we weren't supposed to do, and it's hilarious uh, in some sense of it, but it's really pitiful. So called hilarious to uh, it's hilarious to the people that's making money off of our people, the ignorance of our people, and the indoctrination. So again, to honor the Roman goddess Magna Mater or Great Mother dates back to 250 B.C. So, and this goes on and on. And again, Elvis Kwan did an excellent job uh, through the spirit of Yahweh, Yahweh Shah. Hallelujah. Yeah. And if, if, you know, you really, that's, that's a book you, you got to get. Every household, every Israelite should know this. You should know the details about uh, the holiday hustle, you know, everything that's going on. Uh, the scriptures clearly tell us we're not supposed to learn the ways of the heathen. So I just wanted to bring that out. Uh, before I went into the message today. Real exciting. I'm always excited to be around uh, the Akim, the Akwa, you know, be around the Mashuka, be around the family, and get another opportunity to, you know, speak to my brothers and my sisters in the spirit of uh, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai. This is something that I uh, has been laid upon my heart, uh, which is your mind, uh, spiritual discipline. And that's something that a lot of us need. Uh, a lot of the brothers did need to hear it, they ain't here right now. But we need that spiritual discipline, you know, and that's why you don't see a lot of brothers, uh, you know, a lot of times. Spiritual discipline is necessary for victory. And so when this came upon me, I was like, it's too much of the lukewarm and not having that, uh, what I call intestinal fortitude, you know, to, to push forward, to push through in spite of what you feel. And this kind of ties into that demasculinization because when you're demasculinized or infeminized uh, what you end up doing is leaning more on your emotions to dictate your actions as opposed to just doing what is right in spite of your emotions all right that's why the woman's the weaker vessel because she's going to be led with that those emotions the man ain't supposed to be led in the same way we're supposed to be uh, morally sound, I'm not saying the women aren't supposed to be morally sound, but as the leaders of the household, we need to be the standard and we should set the example. Alright, so what is it going to take? 
It's going to take spiritual discipline. Give me Matthew 5 and 29. You know, it's just cut and dry, and, it, and it's, it's to the point. You either in or you out. Right. So hopefully this will be a motivation for some of us. Um, and for others, hopefully it will operate uh, as a deterrent to do the opposite. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 29. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out, and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, and not that the whole body should be cast into hell. Now that, that's a powerful statement coming from your house, shot. Mm -hmm. He was letting us know look, that this thing is this real, that, and the symbolism of pulling your eye out, meaning if what you're looking at is deterring you from following that straight and narrow, right. remove it. Right. Because it, that eye is going to end up leading you into the ways of destruction. It's going to take you away from that straight and narrow path. And so now, it, in what they in the Hebrew, they call it, uh, in the modern, a uh, shokato, which is a good eye, or you could have a ra, uh, uh, shoker or some, an evil eye, mm -hmm. meaning which your, your eye is evil. It was considered in the Hebrew culture that if you wore glasses, your eyes was evil. Or if you, you had obstruct, you know, you couldn't see well, mm -hmm. that was considered, that was the mindset. We were like, man, your, your, your eyes are off, you know, because you, you have an infirmity in it. It's going to lead you in the wrong way. So we as men, as well as women, but really men right now in terms of being the leaders, and being the head, your vision and what you see, you have to have an a eye that's not obstructed. So if you do, it's better that you remove that one. I, I got an uncle, I, and again, I can't make this out. No, I sound like Elder Dequan. I got an uncle. You got a bunch of all uncles like myself. But I got an uncle that was a truck driver for many years, and I believe he still drives trucks. He might have retired. I don't keep up with them. But as long as I can remember, he had a glass. One of his eyes was a glass eye. But he was still driving trucks. But he had a glass eye. I never asked what, what happened to his eye. I remember when I was younger, my parents told me that he would leave it in a jar. And I thought it was like a marble or something. <laughs> and I you know, tried to get it, mess with it. But I was like, he drove trucks for years with one eye. Wow. Now, it's better that you have that one eye than to have that one that's obstructed and it could actually cause damage to the other one. Obviously, they needed, they needed to remove it or it would be further damaged. Read that again. The book of Matthew 5 and 29. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out. Now, the, how should I say take it away? Then we see the spiritual symbolism. But take it away if it offends you. A, a lot of times, again, if you were caught in a snare, and you need to get out of the way of a moving train. And you it was either cut this mm -hmm. this part of your hand off or get hit by the train. What you gonna do? That's how we need to see that. That's spiritual discipline. When it comes to this truth, can't be no compromise. We either gonna do that. And if this is if this thing in my flesh is so bad causing me to be an offense to the most high, I gotta cut it out. And we're gonna find out how we can do that today. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, read it again. If thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. And cast it from thee. That's very simple. Read on. For it is profitable for that for thee that one of thy members should perish. It's profitable. Meaning you, what that one eye perish, that this other one, you know a lot of times they say when you lose a limb, the other one becomes stronger. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Read. And not that the whole body should be cast True, into hell. That the whole body should be destroyed, which we know hell, Gehenna, dealing with fire. Which we know that that's going to deal with uh, after you die. All right, destruction. Hallelujah. All right, now we, we must embrace the simplicity. This is what was revealed to me. The simplicity of the truth to prevail. So we must embrace the simplicity of the truth. What do I mean by that? It's not that hard in terms of the instructions. We have the instructions. What becomes challenging is doing them. But it's going to take spiritual discipline to do it. The spirit, we know uh, the spiritual discipline to turn your eye away. 
Right. From something that you may, your eye may deem as interesting. Right. You know, it, it, it takes spiritual discipline. Right. You know, to look the other way, turn your head, put your head down. Right. You know, mm -hmm. we're going to get into some of that. Um, give me 2 Corinthians 11 and verse 3. Because in Hamashiach, there is a, there's a rhythm and there's a flow with this truth, man. There's, there's, a, there's things you just know. You know, Kalak even brought it out, Kalak would call, uh, but lawyer, the, the Levite, man, he, he saw it the last time we were out teaching, you know, how this Edomite, he out there looking at other men's wives, lusting all over them. He told him, he cut them. Damn devil. <laughs> yeah, man, that's all. You ain't supposed to do that. The, the, the heathens have never had no spiritual discipline, right? right. They've never had no intestinal fortitude. Or they wouldn't have done the things that they've done. Right. Rape, rob, murder. They wouldn't have done those things, man. Read. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 11 and 3. But I fear, least by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety, so your mind should be corrupted. From the simplicity that is in the Messiah. Co corrupted. Because it's that quick. Mm -hmm. It's simple though. But it's that quick. You know, some brothers, you know, need a check up. Mm -hmm. As they say, from the neck up. Right? <laughs> you, your neck all twisty every time a woman comes out. What the hell is wrong with you, brother? <laughs> looking around. Everybody, every woman come by, you looking. You Now you're an inspector. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? Read it again from the top. But I feel at least by any means... As the serpent beguiled Eve. As the serpent beguiled Eve. Deceived you, man. Don't think that you're going to get a pass for that for the most high. That that's going to just be, you know, smoothed over like it's nothing. He said, your right eye fit. You're supposed to pluck it out. Read. Through his subtility. A lot of brothers need to be missing eyes out here. <laughs> hey, hey, brother, that should be Shamar on that back door. Grab that back door. Don't that. Yeah. A lot of brothers, a lot of brothers, you know, should be like this out there in camp. <laughs> what happened to you, brother? I had to pluck it out. <laughs> All right, I know how you know. We make, we, I'm laughing about, but you know, again, it's serious. Read it again from the top. But I fear, at least by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve mm -hmm. through his subtility, come on. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity. That is in your house. The simplicity, man. The simple statements, because sometimes we get too caught up into things that are unnecessary. You know, we we we're getting too caught up. We just need to get back to the basics. Get back to the simplicity. Just controlling and ruling your own spirit. If you can't do that, what you need to do? What you need to break down for the uh, the twelve tribes in Jackson and them over there in Africa? Why you need that breakdown so tight? You can't even rule your own spirit. But you got that breakdown. And you got all, you got 100% truth. And can't nobody do nothing with you. But you can't rule your own spirit. Yeah, man. Give me Romans 12, 7 and 8. It's the simplicity in this, man. It's, it's simple. These are the simple things. Because again, the faithful, the faithful doorkeeper is going to receive more than the unfaithful priest every time. Brought the scripture. If I could just be a doorkeeper and just do that with dignity and righteousness and intestinal fortitude, with spiritual discipline, it takes a discipline to stay in post. It takes a discipline to have your head watching and making sure that your brother's taken care of. You know that nobody's coming in the camp. It shows you when when people see that they don't see that discipline. Man, that's, that, they weak out there, man. Anybody, huh? he saw the king put somebody out. You knocked out profit right down here in Rollins. <laughs> well, it makes no sense. It shows the lack of spiritual discipline. And you get snuffed out by Eve. You're the angel's supposed to be protecting you. This happened? This happened. Oh, man. Yeah, this happened. <laughs> <laughs> they know who they are. <laughs> I'm not going to go into that, but they know who they are. Oh, yeah. I know this probably won't do a video. I don't care. <laughs> it won't be the first time they did a video. <laughs> right. uh, Romans 12, go ahead. The book of Romans 12 and 7. 
or a minister, let us wait on our ministering. If you're a minister, certain things we need to wait for before we go into them. Read. Or he that teaches on teaching. On teaching. You know, a lot of them quick want to jump, but you don't have no spiritual discipline about yourself. You, you don't put the cart before the horse. Read. Or he that exhorteth on exhortation. Mm -hmm. Or exhorting their brother or lifting them up. You know, spiritual uh, you know, awakening you want to give your brothers or exhortation, lift them up. Come on. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. With simplicity. Even those things we need to do it with the simplicity. Just the, what I call common sense mm -hmm. of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Things that we know that are that should be enhanced in us, should be more developed. Some of these things you know when you're young or, or as a child, but they should be more pronounced, so to speak, when we come into this truth. Read. He that ruleth with diligence. With diligence. If you're going to be a ruler, if you're going to be a Nazi or a Nasa, a leader of any camp, you're supposed to do it with what? Diligence. With diligence, man. It ain't no quit. It ain't no stopping. It ain't about what we feel. It's about doing what's right. Read. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. With cheerfulness. There's a certain way of me and Obadiah always talk about that movie, uh, The Curse of the Golden Flower. Yeah, we know it was some uh, so-called Chinese. Well, they took that discipline, though, from us. They showed tremendous discipline in that movie. They said, we're going to play our roles to perfection. That's the, that's the character we got to have. They got that from the Israelites. You know, everybody even in battle array, nobody breaking ranks, everybody, you know, on point, in line, in ranks, you know, hallelujah, yeah, like the scripture talks about. All right. We know that when we come into this, there's all there's a preparation. How do we have spiritual dis discipline by preparation? A lot of times we don't prep. There's no prep. I'm not gonna be that much longer because y'all y'all ain't gonna like me. But the prep, <laughs> we don't we don't prep a whole lot. So we, we need to get back to preparing yourself for trials. That's right. Matter of fact, what you said? That's the Hebrew word, kum. Kum, which uh, I remember that. Kum is prepare. prepare to prayer. That's right. Or, or order, mm -hmm. you know, a kum, the Hebrew word kum, order my steps, you know. Mm -hmm. I'll go, yeah. Give me Ecclesiasticus Sirach 2 and 1. We're going to stay there a little bit. We gotta prepare ourselves for trials. So we know when we come into this, that they're gonna be trials, but if you need to have some spiritual discipline. And you know, when elder, me and elders first start going out teaching together, and you know, I mean I would get angry quick with Esau. And Elder been doing this a little bit. So I would go out and Esau tell me they're gonna set us on fire. Man, I was ready to rise, man, what this dude trying to do? He wanna burn us? He's trying to try to burn us. He wanna burn us. And I was ready to go at him. And they have some spiritual discipline about it. You know, these are, and prepare yourself for those trials. You know that that could happen. We got to start preparing our minds like that and stop being so reactionary to things that happen. Had you prepared, you already know, you know, be slow. Be slow, you know, and, and your reaction and, and be observant, you know. That's preparation. That's why we train. That's why we train. We train for what? You know, the rehearsal of the righteous acts so that we can be prepared. That's the preparation. The meditating on the word day and night, that's the preparation. Don't get, don't get to the show and it don't look like you practice. You don't know your lines. What the hell you been doing? Oh, you done had the, you done had the script. You done had the script all year. You've been to rehearsal. Now, we, now you choke when it comes to the show. All right, Lord, yeah. Go ahead and bring it up. The book of Sarah, chapter 2 and verse 1. My son, if thou come to serve Yahweh or serve the Most High. If you come to serve the Most High, we know we hear the scripture, but this is the preparation. We need to have the mindset. Because a lot of uh, the acting that we see now, they, they, not have, they don't have the spiritual discipline. Read. Prepare thy soul for temptation. Prepare your soul for what? Temptation. To be tempted. So you already know that that's coming. A lot of our brothers say, man, I got caught up. I got caught up. Man, you didn't know this when you came in. It? Yeah, I got to, the temptation. Yeah, it took me over, Obadiah. Mm -hmm. You've been in Israelite for how long? 
Yeah. You know, it's true. It really don't have nothing to do with it as long as you, if you read it and you said, when the Most High gave the commandments, how long they had to do it? They need to do it right then. With them. They have a whole lot of time. A lot of brothers use that as an excuse too. Man, I've only been in it three years. That, that's long enough. That's a long enough for you not to commit adultery, brother. That's long enough for you not to be fornicating. Man, I slipped up. I slipped up. Read it again. My son, if thou come to serve the Most High. Well, then you know that when you came to serve the Most High? When you came to serve the Most High? But you knew that, right? Right. Go ahead. Prepare thy soul for temptation. Prepare thy soul for temptation. So we know that these trials are going to come. And we got to prepare ourselves. And how much more us who we see the struggle. We see what our forefathers went through. We saw the punishments of what they've done when they went to the left, when they erred. So we should be greater prepared. We should be going through the same thing as our forefathers went through. Because we saw this was for our learning. We're supposed to learn something. You read this and you're doing the same thing? Man, you, you ain't learned nothing. Uh, read on. Cleave unto him and depart not away. Cleave unto him. That's how we get that spiritual discipline. Right? By cleaving to the Most High. And so we're in the book of Ecclesiasticus, 2 and 1 in the Apocrypha, or the Sirach. Cleave. Read that part again, because a lot of times we, we, miss, we miss certain things. We miss certain aspects, and the Most High has given the simplicity of it. It's right there in our face, and a lot of times, because of our flesh, we go right over it. And we don't really meditate on what He's telling us. It's very simple, and it's right there in our our face. We have the tools necessary to be spiritual discipline. Discipline. We we are training for mortal and spiritual combat. We're equipped. Nobody should be more equipped. No, ain't no Catholic, no Buddhist, no Christian. Nobody. No other nation, no other man on this planet should be more spiritually disciplined than the Israelites, man. And we should be ashamed when we see that. When we see other people got more discipline. Some of the stuff that's going on in Yahshua Allah, don't go on in the church. Read. Verse 2, set thy heart all right and constantly endure. Constantly endure, man. Don't let no child, don't let no wicked woman, don't let nothing, don't let your evil eye mess you up from this truth. Read. And make not haste in the time of trouble. Woo, make not haste. Like some of us, even dealing with infirmities and stuff, and scripture clearly tells us how to deal with men. Turn to the east, man. Don't be negligent, man. Turn right away. There's certain things we do. Don't don't start getting. Don't get effeminate on me. Don't get that weak spirit. Man. Let's let's get in. Let's do what the Most High is giving us to do. Let's play our roles perfect. Right? Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Read. Cleave unto Him mm. and depart not away. Whew, that's how you get the spiritual discipline. You cannot leave. That's the nutrition. That's where you get nurtured. Just don't depart. Because every time you leave, when you get them missing, we're going to come find you. <laughs> All right? <laughs> but you need to know that we can't, we can't, again, many, too many of us are forsaking the assembly of themselves amongst the Israelites. That's why this room ain't packed. But we know that they're dealing with something. You know that. If you ain't seen a brother in, in six Sabbaths, two Sabbaths, three Sabbaths, he, what he doing? Where he at? You ain't that unclean, brother. <laughs> Where you, right. Right. What, what, you, what you doing? Read on. Cleave unto him and depart not away. Hallelujah. Give me verse 17. Verse 17. Of a quick same chapter. They that fear the Most High will prepare their hearts and humble their souls in his sight. It's very simple, man. You're going to prepare your mind. And you're going to humble yourself. What's the humility for? What's the humility for? To follow. That's going to help. That's the glue that keeps you cleaving. Because we know what comes before a great fall. 
Right. I don't need the most high no more. I don't need to hang out with them brothers. I can do my own thing. Right. You know, I don't I don't need that. I go somewhere else. Get that. I can do my I'm me. It's about me. I'm gonna do what I wanna do. I can I mean I'm a one man army. I'm an army of one, brother. Them brothers is off. I don't need all your but brothers is so off. You're supposed to help them. We're supposed to help one another. That's what we we we're building up a spiritual priesthood. We're supposed to be strengthening one another. Yeah, man. And so we see all these divisions. The scriptures tell us to mark those who cause divisions. You know? These people we're supposed to stay away from. Let me say something too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, one of the, one, one of the uh, signs that I know uh, when you have brothers that, um, you know, do come together, you know, and they, or they, they affiliate themselves with the camp or they affiliate themselves with the school. One sign of a brother wanting to lead is when he says, uh, I'm going to just go by myself, man. I'm going to just do this work by myself. How are you going to do the work by yourself, man? You have, to, you have to have brotherhood to balance out, you know, what you do. How are you going to just sit in the house? What are you going to do? You going to look at TV all day, man? You know, you have to give a brother a call. You have to affiliate yourself with brothers to keep that balance, you know, to let you know if you're going to the left or going to the right. I, I would never say that I'm going to do this on my own. I'm going to take this job. Man, I'm, I'm just doing work by myself. How are you going to do that, man? That just opens up a door and a floodgate for Satan to come and attack you. When a brother says that, he just, ah, I'm just going to be by myself. Satan is waiting for you to say that so he can come in. But right now, like me and the priest Jacques and I was talking about, the Most High has a hedge over all of us, man. Sure. And as soon as you say things like that, Satan, the demons, is waiting for anything to just get in and say, now we got him. Now we got him. I'm going to work on my own armor. You know, this, that, I ain't affiliate myself with no school, man. That's Satan waiting for you to say those very words so he can come and he can attack you, man. Because now your guard's down. Now you ah, I ain't affiliate myself with nobody. That's it. That's, That's right. it, man. Especially if there's a weak brother in the beginning and you say stuff like that. You know, you weak anyway. You That's know what right. I'm saying? You're going to say, you're going to go and do work on your own? No, that's that's your way of saying bye-bye. That's right. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> see you, brothers. See you, brothers, later. Bye-bye. You know, I can't imagine myself, man, coming in and not fellowshipping with y'all brothers, man, and, and, and priest y'all and over dire, man. Y'all hear me say something like that, brother. Y'all know I'm, I'm about to lose it, man. You know, <laughs> don't make no sense. Twelve disciples, they rolled in packs, man. It was twelve of them. They ain't saying, I'm, I'm going to do this on my own. It's twelve of them. <laughs> Yeah. That's right. No, that's powerful what you're bringing out. And even when you think about uh, the animal kingdom, the packs, if you know that you're a prey, when, when the gazelles, they safer in a pack. You see, too many of our people don't realize that we're prey out here. They hate us. They just shot another Negro the other day. All you got to do is turn on the, chat, on the news. That's if, the other day. Every city, <laughs> every state, almost every country. Our young men are dying wholesale. So, I mean, again, we have to start realizing that stick. That's the problem with our nation there. We don't stick together. We don't have no unity. Right. Okay. Even when you're alone on a spiritual level, uh, there's a, a, a desolate place spiritually that you're attacked because of the spirits in the air. That's right. You know what I mean? So we need to be together to encourage one another in the truth. Uh, uh, even spiritually, so because when you were, you know, apart, that spiritual protection is not there. That's right. To bear the burdens, each other's infirmities. That's what we're supposed to do. That's what the brotherhood is all about. Yeah. The Israelite brotherhood. It was all about that. And like Elder said, there's always what's in a multitude of, of counsel. What the scriptures tell us that it's safety. 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 Yeah. it's safety. It's safety. All praises. Give me um. Ecclesiasticus 18.23. Yeah, man, we got to prepare. Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 18 and verse 23. Before thou prayest, mm -hmm. prepare thyself. So that's even before prayer. In prayer, you got to prepare yourself. There's a preparation. This is how we get the spiritual de discipline. It's just like the arts, man. If you get a particular form, you got to practice that form. And then you got to prepare. Sometimes you see them breathing. There's, you know, you're breathing. You're getting yourself, even before you engage in any hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat, there's, you have to learn how to breathe. And so, so that you're not causing your heart rate to go in. And then, man, you, you tired. And you ain't throw the first punch. You out, you winded. Knocked out profit. 
Get yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Another one. Down. Yeah. <laughs> be not as one that tempted the most high. Don't tempt the most high. That's where that humility comes in. Because you can't even be rash to say anything before the most high in the presence of the most high. This is a spiritual discipline. Oh, I got something to say. Oh, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, bro. Come on, man. Right. Yeah, they don't even do that in school, man. Mm -hmm. You know, they tell they gonna get they gonna make you leave, man. They're gonna call security. Mm -hmm. They gonna say, this brother is irate. He just <laughs> interrupting everybody and stuff. What's wrong with this brother? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we gotta start having some spiritual discipline. Read. Verse 24. Think upon the wrath that shall be at the end. Woo. That's how you get that strength. And that's what keeps you. That's how you won't become an offense to the most high. That's how you get that spiritual discipline. Read on. And the time of vengeance, when he shall turn away his face. His face. So these are the things that we, and this will promote that intestinal fortitude. Give me Ecclesiastes 33 and 4. So around 33 and verse 4. four, verse four. Prepare what to say. And so shall thou be heard. You see that? Like even when we go out here, man, there's a preparation. You know, a lot of times you think you can wing it. All right. You, you wing it and man, you're going to get somebody. That day the most I sent somebody to just, he, he knows some stuff. And he got you stuttering. <laughs> we got to prepare. But we do that through being men that study. But going over even what the Most High, the Spirit, He put on certain men to write books and the things that we see in the Scriptures. That's what the meditation is for. This is what the gathering is for. Like uh, even at night, what we started to do, the brothers get together. We come back to the school. We chop it up. That's right. This is this is all part for uh, part for the course in terms of your spiritual growth. Read that part again. Prepare what you're gonna say. Prepare what to say, and so thou shalt be heard. That's right. You got to prepare. Then what you say is going to have an impact. Because a lot of times brothers are speaking, we see it now, they're coming from themselves. Right. You know, it's enough words in this book to cut any unrighteous activity, anything that comes up against us in the way of, you know, what they're speaking, any type of doctrine. You know, everything that we need is right here. And all we got to do is say this. We ain't got to say, hey, well, you look dumb. Yeah, I mean, come on, man. There's more to this. Now, I know sometimes they get get on your nerves. I had a I had a, ba a bout with that. Had a, a, what called carnal Tourette's. You know, you dummy. Yeah, but but there's more things that that you can say from here that's gonna have more impact. Guess what it takes? It takes discipline. It's easy for your flesh to get. You know, are you in the scripture? You have, read Jeremiah 23, 1. Yeah. Man, I'll choke you. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, see, that, that, that's no spiritual discipline, man. People looking like, right, right that brother. I, how long he been in this? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, yeah, he, he just started. Yeah. Matthew, give me Matthew 10, 22. Because this is, spiritual discipline is what's necessary, again, for victory. But when we appreciate these things, the simplicity of the truth, we, we can endure. And that's what we're here for. We're here to endure. I want to see this young brother that came today. I want to see where all things being equal, he should be putting me in the ground. You see what I'm saying? And he grow up in strength and man, he carry on. If we hear that long, he carrying it on. You know what I'm saying? And so this this is what we, we're looking for the long haul. We ain't looking for the quick fix. All right? The book of Matthew, chapter 10 and verse 22. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Man, if you, why a lot of brothers coming to this thing all of a sudden? Man, don't nobody like me. And then you notice, you didn't notice what you got here? That's what the scripture said. We haven't prepared. We're finding things out after the fact. One of the things we got to teach is preparation, man. These brothers train, man. You got the military is trained. They're preparing. Why do you think they out? At the range all the time. Why do you think these they, uh, these police department got all these military vehicles and stuff? You think they just sitting there collecting dust? They're preparing. But we know that this battle is a spiritual one. And we must prepare. All right? Go get it, old guy. Where we going? Go ahead, Pete. All right, second Corinthians. Second Corinthians, let's get it. 
So yeah, grab that Matthew 10, 22. Okay, he gonna get it. Mm -hmm. Just read it. Read it. Matthew 10, 22. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Come on. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. He that endures to the end shall be saved. So you can't be saying, man, I don't want to go out there no more, man. Every time we go out there, somebody <laughs> tell us how much they don't like us and they hate it. You ain't prepared for this. You ain't prepared for this. The scriptures, this is an honor and a privilege to be hated because they hated the Messiah. And so this is the preparation. We know when we go out there. Read what you got over there. This is our 2 Corinthians 10. Verse 3 says, for though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. So we're not warring after the flesh. That's And it takes spiritual discipline not to knock nobody out. <laughs> it's calling you all these racial slurs and, you know, wanting, uh, suggesting bodily harm. They want to do to you all these things, cursing out your mother. Uh, we had it all done. Anybody that's been out here on these streets, we know the, the wickedness and the evil that can come from people's minds. Read. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not carnal. Come on. But mighty through the most high to the pulling down of strongholds. So we're going to pull down these strongholds spiritually, you know, through what we say. Now, like I say, we're not here for violence, but we will defend ourselves. Yeah. I mean, we're going to, this is it's a physical walk as well. But the weapons that we're using is spiritual. Come on. Casting down the imaginations. And every high thing that exalt itself against the knowledge of the Most High. Hallelujah. Yeah. And bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of the Messiah. That's that's discipline. It's going to take discipline to do that. We don't. And having a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So that's why your obedience has to be fulfilled. That's the only way you can uh, revenge all disobedience. A lot of people are not in the right position to speak out against injustices because they're injustice, they're an unjust person themselves mm -hmm. without justice. Give me Ephesians 6.12. That ain't going to be too much longer than I don't want to run into that time. But this was really just dropped in my spirit. Like the scripture said, drop the word. Yeah, it was just literally dropped in my spirit. The book of Ephesians, chapter 6 and verse 12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. That's not what we wrestle against. Because guess what? It's a mentality. You, 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 look, if you were to take some of these people out, they just burst some new ones. You some more just like them doing the same thing. That's what we see through generation, generation. That's not going to stop this, that mentality. It's only going to be spiritual warfare. You're going to have to change the minds of our people. We're not concerned. He only come for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So that's what our focus is. And we can't allow anything to distract us from that. Hallelujah. It takes discipline. Read. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world. Okay. Hallelujah. So we know that. Real quick, give me Luke 9 and 62. Because we, we have started a powerful work. This, this is something, there's nothing that you can do. There's no NBA career that you could have, NFL. There's no type of degree that you could get, even though they got people yelling and screaming over there. That damn degree, like Elvis Aquinas said, you ain't getting nothing but a receipt for it. <laughs> Next thing you know, the way the economy's going, you're going to be working at McDonald's with a doctorate. <laughs> Man, the best thing you can do is to serve the most high, man. Right. But with right. all your heart, mind, and soul. You don't want to do this if you're not going to do it like that. That's right. It's the only thing you you got to give your all to receive any type of benefit. People half in it all day long on their job. Right. Still get a check. So-called white man been half in it all his life. He received monetary benefits. That's right. But we know what our reward is. It's the king. It's rulership. Read. The book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 62. And Yahweh said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow. Don't start this. Because no man having put his hand to the plow. Come on. And looking back. And you look back. Come on, you looking back. Now, plow, you, you sowing. You sowing. You digging up the land. 
You're getting ready to have a harvest. You got to keep on going. Now, if your food source, if your life depended on it, you're going to keep your hand to the plow. That's how we're going to have to see this. And that's the right. spiritual discipline necessary for victory. That's the spiritual. That, because we got this, our life, you got to do it not like your life depends. Your life depends upon it. Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. It depends on it. Your very existence. Read. And looking back. It's fit for the kingdom of the Most High. You're not fit for the kingdom. If you start this and now you're looking back, dang, I need to go back to that dog slot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> go back to that vomit. Oh, there man, ain't no way. You're not fit. You're not deserving of it. So we're going to steady the course. And we don't care who don't like it. That's right. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. Shout out to Taz. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, oh. you know, we know that the harvest is plentiful. But what? Laborers. Laborers, man. People getting tired. <laughs> People getting tired. People falling, falling off, man. Breaking ranks. You know. We got part of it's gonna take discipline to do this. Give me Matthew 5, 37. And this is the simplicity of it. This is the simplicity of the truth. When we learn these things, man, y'all gonna be mighty. I, I know I know we already are, but guess what? We all ain't arrived. We're still pressing towards the prize or the mark or the high calling. So we want to get stronger and stronger. I know I want to increase in strength, mm -hmm. in spiritual strength. I'm ready to get my avatar. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That's what I want to get. I want to get my that spiritual body. Start taking head. <laughs> what do you say? Kicking head, taking head. <laughs> oh, great. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 37. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, and nay. Come on, read on. For whatsoever is more than these. If the morning is, if, if your word ain't your bond, you know, we need to be that to one another, man. Let's practice that with one another. We say what we're going to do, we do what we're going to say, and we start with the brotherhood. Read. Cometh of evil. It cometh of evil, man. Because you know you don't you you're seen as somebody that's not spiritually sound, and that you don't have any discipline about yourself. Mm -hmm. Who wants to follow a, a, a man that's not disciplined? You say, who wants to follow an instructor? He's a martial artist, and uh, he, he like Dragonfly Jones. <laughs> you know, he get beat up by his students. <laughs> But well, yeah, yeah, for those who watch that show, you know what I'm talking about. But who wants to get uh, an instructor in martial arts and he don't know what he, he don't, you, you practice more than him. You were elevated above him, but he's your teacher. He's, he's not, there's no discipline there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. So, read that again. It says, ye have heard. No, I'm sorry. Verse 37. But let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. That's right. So we must, uh, again, that intestinal fortitude, spiritual toughness is what we need. That's what you need, that spiritual toughness to endure. Just like when you arm banging and you're making your forearms tough, you make it, you got you got to keep doing that. Uh, you, you got to lock doing knuckle push-ups. Hands like he snapped back. I thought something was wrong with his wrist. The way he was doing the knuckle push-ups. I said, man, he's been doing that. He been, that's a this he's been practicing that. Con. So, you know, that's something you gotta have that spiritual toughness. We this other brother was trying to get down there and knuckle ow! <laughs> spiritual toughness. We gotta be like that spiritually. But it takes repetition. Spiritual toughness. Endure the fight through by repetition. That's, right. That's how you endure by repetition. Give me Judges uh, 5 and 11. But that's okay. Hey, you got to start. They're going to be like that today, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need you told on yourself. I got what you talking about. <laughs> Go ahead and read. Book of Judges, chapter 5, verse 11. They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the places of drawing water, 
There shall they rehearse the righteous act. So rehearse. That's why we rehearse. That's how you get you endurance through rehearsal. Hallelujah. Not we rehearsing the righteous acts. I mean, we don't have to get them. We don't have to really do them. We just rehearsing, man. Man, man what you talking about? Mm -hmm. You got to do them to be tough, to endure. Read again. It says, They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the places of drawing water, Come on. there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Most High. And the Most High is giving, he's feeding us, man, with the truth. Go ahead. Even the righteous acts towards the inhabitants of the villages in Israel. Come on. Then shall the people of the Most High go down to the gates. To the gates, man. And that's where we're going to be prepared. We have that spiritual toughness and we'll be able to endure. Now, real quick, going back to that eye and what your house shot said, man, if your eye offend you, mm. you know, you're supposed to turn away from it. You know, pluck it out. It's a symbolism. And you turn away. That's showing discipline. And when you out there and you at camp and you got women coming by and we're supposed to be men of the most high and everybody on the front line like that. <laughs> you know what, I mean? like, what the hell is going on with that camp? Yeah. You might as well have Rick James up there, man. It don't make no sense. We you gotta have discipline. Let's get Ecclesiastes and Sirach 9 and 8. But the more you you turn away and the more you meditate on the word, the more that you embrace uh, the humility and understand the simplicity of his truth, you, he's going to reveal to you why you should turn. A lot of times we're trying to figure out, well, it feels great to my flesh. You're not spiritually disciplined. Right? You're still carnally minded. Read. The book of Sirach, chapter 9 and verse 8. Turn thy eye from a beautiful woman, and look not upon another's beauty. Did it say turn, or did it say stay? <laughs> look not upon another's beauty. You read it again for the beginning. Turn away thy eye from a beautiful woman. Maybe some brothers, you, you missed that. You, it was just turn and look at a beautiful woman. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what it's saying. Read. Turn away thy eye from a beautiful woman. Sirach 9 and 8. Ecclesiastes 9 and 8. Turn thy eye away, not towards, away. So you got enough time. Oh, she's beautiful. Boom. Oh. Boom. Oh. Nope. Nope. That's discipline. That's discipline. Uh -uh. Nope. Read. And look not upon another's beauty. You're not supposed to look at another's beauty. And again, you don't know if that's that, that woman could be married. You committing uh, fornication. Adultery with your eyes. Well, she could be the damn devil. She could be the devil, either way. <laughs> but you're not supposed to be you know, eye checking her. Go ahead, read. And look not upon another's beauty. Come on. For many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman. Ooh. Well, I don't even have to go into that. Many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman. In the ancient world, a lot of them harlots was beautiful. Mm -hmm. But we know that that's the pathway to destruction. Mm -hmm. The gateway to hell. Read. For herewith love is kindled as a fire. Mm. Read on. Sit not at all with another man's wife. Come on, they do that all day long in the church. They're going to be doing that tomorrow, Mother's Day. <laughs> yeah. Sitting with other men. But I cannot make this up. Mm -hmm. It was a church in New York. It was a, uh, what they call Latino church. And I ended up, this was years ago when I was a pastor. Many, many years ago. And I went there. And they would have the people come up, and the women, other men's wives, was giving gifts to other men. And would have them come up and present a gift to the other men. So they were all around there sitting, chit-chatting. Read that again. <laughs> Sit not at all with another man's wife. They do that in the church. The pastor, he want to counsel. Oh, well, uh, yeah, let me just uh, counsel your wife. I'm going to counsel her, and you just... uh. You go in the back right there and sit with Deacon Jones. <laughs> Why I can't come in there? Uh, we don't, I just want to meet with her, see what she got to say. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, yeah, it, it, it. Nine months later, <laughs> the wicked pastors, they go on all the church. Damn, that little boy looks just like pastor. <laughs> it's, it's the spirit. Yeah, it's the devil. <laughs> Nor sit down with her in 
thy arms. In thy arms. So you, you, we know that that's all. Uh, go ahead. I think it's another one. <laughs> and spend not thy money with her at the wine. Come Peace on. thy heart incline unto her. And so through thy desire, thou fall into destruction. That all goes on in the world, man. Mm -hmm. Let me ask something. Go ahead. Too. Yeah, the uh, priest is uh, a thousand percent correct. And uh, what brothers have to get out of the habit of doing um not saying brothers in here, but I know it goes on a lot in the church. Um, you're not supposed to hug another man's wife. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because a hug really is an embrace. Mm -hmm. You know, a woman, she's, you know, well endowed, you know, you know, breasts and stuff like that. You know, and you got that that goes on in church. I mean like like people drink water. You know, you got the pastors that see men wives, come in, give me a hug. <laughs> they call it, all. What they call it a all. Christian hug. Yeah. You know, and, and you know yeah. how them pastors are, you know, and you got women, you got men that are Hug women and yeah. put them close and stuff like that. And right, women do the same thing. Women do the same thing, mm -hmm. right? So you're not supposed to be hugging another man's wife. You know that that's something you know you're not supposed to do because you know when you think about you know like uh, as far as the Esau called foreplay, that's really like a form of foreplay. You know, you're touching a woman and you're hugging and you bring her close to you. Mm -hmm. You know, that's that's an embrace that can lead to other things. You know what I mean? So that's all, man. We see the pastors and the deacons in the church. Let me uh, come on over here. And let me. I ain't seen your wife in a long time, Deacon uh, Johnson. Let me hug. Let, let me give you wife hug. Come here, uh, Miss Johnson. Come here, give me a hug, <laughs> brother. That's an embrace, man. That's right. an embrace, man. You hug a pretty woman and see how your spirit, and your body react, brother. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. That's why I want to say something. In the church, they got meet and greet. Yeah. yeah. Let's get up and greet everybody. That that make a lot of sense why they do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it doesn't make sense. And there's something else I want to address. It may be a little off topic, but again, Elder Zaquan mentioned something about foreplay. A lot of times, you know, that carnal mind, and if you don't have spiritual discipline, it's that part of your flesh is going to rule you. Any Israelite that's at the club dancing and gyrating with some woman, you all, uh, I'm going to tell you. You ain't doing no ministry now. I'm, I'm gonna tell you, you're not supposed to be at no damn nightclub dancing to, I mean, Eminem. The devil. The damn devil. You're not on none of that foolishness, man. Talking about you there ministering. Yeah, that's, I mean, come on, man. You're not even supposed to be there. We already know that environment, but you're going to say you there, you know, you're doing, doing the, the work. Yeah, you're doing some work. <laughs> you're doing your fleshly work, dancing. I'm not catch no Israelite. Now, I couldn't catch because I wouldn't be there. But I mean, after I hear nothing about no Israelite uh, that we know of in the damn club, you got your fringes swinging. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? Yeah, somebody need to yoke you up out of there, man. That's, that's carnal as hell. We're not supposed to give any provision for the flesh. Romans 13 and 14. All right. We, this, this is going to, and guess what you're going to get from this power? Most high, you're going to, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be something on you, that like some men may not like it, where women don't even look at you like that. They look at you, they can see the spirit on the most high, of, on you, and they'll be like, especially a wicked woman. No, no. It, no not him. No, not him. <laughs> no, I can't, can't mess with him. And them demons, they recognize. Mm -hmm. that's, great. that's the spirit, though, because what you just said is the same thing that Steph Curry wife going through. It's all over the news. She made a comment mm -hmm. that she don't feel no attraction from other men. Yeah. And a lot of the women are agreeing with her. But all the men are saying, you got Steph Curry. They respect her. Why do you want attention from mm -hmm. other men? Mm -hmm. That's yeah, wicked. Yeah. That's, that's this, this environment. And that's why we have to be a light in darkness, man. We're supposed to be the light of the world. How the hell are you is like you acting just like them? You lusting after women? You at the club? What you doing? All you know is you an Israelite. Ain't nothing different about you. Read. Uh, Romans 13 and 14. But put ye on the master Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. Come on. And make not provision for the flesh. So when this is the spiritual discipline, you don't allow the flesh, because the flesh gonna rise. Mm -hmm. But you don't you have to subdue it. We have to crucify the flesh. What? Daily. Daily. That's how that's the spiritual discipline. If you're not doing it, you will not succeed. There will be no victory. 
This ain't something that you can, you can't put these things that have been written in these scriptures and put them up on the shelf and be like, I get to it when I feel like it. This don't work like that. Church work like that. That's right. That's right. But this don't work like that. In order for this to work, you're going to have to do it. That's right. So I'm not going to be too much. So I got a lot, but we'll we go to a part two. But um, give me 1 Timothy 4 and 1. We got to strengthen those things that are ready to die. According to Revelations 3 and 2, man. We got to strengthen those things. And what does that mean? Those things that, that are ready to fall up off of us, we got to have the spiritual discipline to continue on and, and just, again, get rid of all the, the evil. In that Revelations, uh, Yahweh wasn't pleased completely with what was going on. So he said, I, you know, I got a problem with you. I'm paraphrasing. But you, you got to, you know, your works have not been perfect, man. You got to do a little better. You got to come up on another level. Three. First Timothy 4 and 1. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. That's because they didn't have that spiritual discipline. They took this, they took it not all my counsel. Mm. Read. Um. Now that's just probably the counsel because this is the counsel. This right here. And for you to just reject that, man, and act like this is something that you, whenever you feel like doing it, you can do it, you're not going to be successful in this. Right. You have to do this right. to reap the benefits. Can I get this? Go ahead, bring it up. Psalms 33 and 11. The counsel of the Most High standeth forever. forever. Now, that's enduring. And if you're on his side, that's spiritual discipline. Go ahead. Psalms 33 and verse 11. The counsel of the Most High standeth forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Blessed is the nation whose God or whose power is Yahweh and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Now, and that's, you'll know that you're his chosen when you do this. This, this is a beautiful thing. It don't get better. This is a wellspring of strength that we can draw from. That's right. That's right. This is beautiful. Read on. This was 1 Timothy 4 and 1. Now the Spirit speak expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. At the club. <laughs> At the club. That's run away from the faith. <laughs> yes, man. They depart real. Come on, man. At, at, at another <laughs> brother's wife. You depart from the faith. What are you doing? You get murked for that in the world. What are you talking about? Read. Giving heed to seducing spirit. That seducing spirit, man, that can come from your own mind. That's why we got to have that spiritual discipline. Read. And doctrines of devils. And doctrines of devils. Read on. Speaking lies in hypocrisy. I'm talking about it's all right. I, the most I understand, I. Yeah, you, you too tough on people. Ah, man, let me, let me just, you know, he understand. Ah, mercy. That grace. That grace. I can run around here like a jackass. I got grace. Wait, come on, man. That's not what it's saying. Read. Having their conscience seared. Conscience seared. Come on. With a hot iron. Man, man, man ain't no turning away from that. So we, we already know what that is. But that, that's because it's a lack of spiritual discipline. Let me get this real quick. So let me get to some solutions real quick before I, and then we'll go to part two uh, next week, most I willing. Give me Luke 18 and 1. How do we get it? What's some of the solutions? Most I is giving us the remedy right here. If you if you sick with lack of discipline, or if you you lack of discipline deficient, yeah, this is how you get nourished. This is how you get your strength. Read. The book of Luke, chapter 18 and verse 1. And he spoke a parable unto them to this end, that men are always to pray and not to faint. A lot of us got a weak prayer life. We don't pray enough. We don't pray enough. It's not limited to three times a day. If you're going through something, you need to turn to the east. Sickness is just not physical infirmity. It's spirit. It's the flesh. We in this this is the flesh. You gotta spend more time in the Father's face. Man. What scripture was that? Bring it again. Luke 18 and 1. And he spoke a parable unto them to this end, 
that men ought always to pray and not faint. And not faint. It's prayer. Even your house shot to ask the side, you couldn't even pray with me for, for one hour. He even needed some help. Sometimes so the requirement at least an hour. At least an hour. <laughs> Come on, boy. That's right, because he knew he wasn't gonna do it that much. He knew how to He said, just an hour? Mm -hmm. How many of us have actually sat there and prayed an hour? Turn to and just pray an hour. Yeah. And then a lot of times the most high. That let the spirit come on you where he'll give you what to say. Mm -hmm. Even what to ask for. Because oh, yeah. yeah. a lot of times we don't know what we're praying for. Mm -hmm. But if you sit there in this face and you sincere, you prepared yourself. You the living sacrifice. You the offer. A lot of times we got away from some of the things. Now everything about the church went back. They just didn't have the power because they weren't connected. But who should be the most praying people? We should need to come in here on some nice turn to the east and let it fly. That's right. We the ones that need to be having to shut it. The churches used to do that. And now people shut it. But we are the people that are connected to the power. We the ones that need to be doing that now. Where it'll be heard. It'll be heard. It'll be received. The buildings will start falling down. Man. <laughs> yeah, strongholds are really, if we really do that, how many Akim are really doing that? We can again, we just pray, man. At least for an hour. And if your house shot's on the right hand, make an intercession, why wouldn't we? Hey, I feel like praying right now. I love it. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Saying, there was a city, a judge, which feared not the most high, neither regarded man. So, yeah, cut that. That's the end of that. Uh, give me Mark 9 and 29. And then I'll get... Uh, because remember, we, we have to worship the Most High in spirit and in truth. So it's in the spiritual realm, which we learned uh, some time back, and which many of you already know, that that's where you're going to receive power from the Most High. And the words I speak, John 6, 63, they are spirit and life. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The book of Mark, chapter 9 and verse 29. And he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Now what kind was this? Go back above that. Uh-huh. And Yahawashai saw that the people came running together, and he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, this is verse 25, mm -hmm. I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. So this was a spirit. This is the spirits that we wrestle against. All right? This was a deaf and dumb spirit. A lot of our people, again, are deaf and dumb out here. Don't know nothing. Don't know that you're an Israelite. Don't know nothing. Read. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him. And he was as one dead, insomuch that many said, he is dead. But Yahawashai took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. Because I believe this is where the disciples couldn't do nothing with, with this spirit. If you read a little bit early, they couldn't do nothing with this. Mm -hmm. Read on. Like many of you, I'm not saying again, we're like, hell, not in here. <laughs> but many of our people still wrestling with stuff, man. Been with them for a while. Mm -hmm. All right. And this was, again, symbolism too, symbolic to some of the things that we have struggled with as men. All right. Read. And when he was come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could not we cast him See, out? See, they were like, man, they couldn't do nothing with this spirit. And there are a lot of th things that people are waiting to be delivered from us. You know, again, the, the, the supernatural things that people call supernatural were natural for, for Yahawashah and for the Israelites and for his disciples. We should lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You sure can. I just want to make one point, too. Yahawashah likened this to not having faith. That's right. Because when you back up to 19, he answered and he said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me before he, he cast the spirit out. That's right. Could, could I say something? What kind of uh, fasting is it talking about? Is it talking about like day of, day of atonement fasting? Or like uh, no food, just water type of fasting? No, day of atonement is no food. And water, right? Yeah, there's no food. It's, that's the same type of fasting. But fasting, when, and we'll teach this one day, but fasting 
doesn't always have to, uh, sometimes you can fast with food, but fasting usually just means without eating. That's what the word fast means. But this is why Yahweh Shah said this. It can only come out. Well, go ahead and finish reading what you say. 29, and he mm -hmm. said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. By what? Prayer and fasting. Prayer and fast. It's not just enough sometimes to just not eat. Because sometimes you can fast. People do that all the time. They fast. But that doesn't bring you up on that spiritual level. It's prayer and fasting. So that combination, that's going to give you that power punch right there. That's where that spiritual discipline comes in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. And I want to get two more, and then I'm going to end uh, so the next brother can come. One of the things, that I know we hear it all the time, but the armor, we really have to understand that it takes spiritual discipline to even to comprehend the aspect of putting on that armor. We hear it in the church. The church has no idea what the armor of the Most High is. The armor of the Most High simply is obedience. That's, a, that's first of all how you even are able to have access to the armor. You know, first you got to, oh, because faith, what is faith? Believing in something. Yeah, faith is what? Obedience. Translate. According to the scripture, faith is the substance. Right, the substance. So it's got to be something that you see, this should be something tangible. Not something that, oh, I got faith. But where is it? Faith without works is what? If it ain't no evidence to your faith, your faith is dead. Being alone. A lot of people got alone faith. Got no works to show for no evidence. All right? Mm -hmm. The armor is uh, Ephesians 6. Yeah, Ephesians 6, 13. Give me that one. You want to go up to 10? No, no. That's just, just Yeah, go to 10. Go to 10. Okay. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the master and in the power of his might. That's how you, you see, this is where you get the spiritual discipline because it's not your might. When it's your might. That's how we know you're weak. Because you're not going to sustain but so much. But it's the power of his might. A lot of people trying to do it on their own strength. Remember, it's not given to the swift. It's not given to the strong. But he who endures to the end. The endurance comes from the most high. Who his kindness endure forever. That's what you're riding on. His burden is light. His yoke is easy. So we're going to get into part two because there's still some more to this. But go ahead, read that. Mm -hmm. Put on the whole armor of the Most High that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Of the devil. Then I get 13. Come on. Verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of the Most High. That's when, going back to Isaiah 52 and 1, when you talking about Zion and put on the strength. Mm -hmm. Your beautiful garments. Your beautiful garments. That's righteousness, man. That's more right. Than more than clothes. It's more than clothes, though. That's it. The symbolism is right obedience. It goes back to faith. When your house y'all say, oh, ye a little faith, I mean, you, you're, not, you're not obeying enough. You're not doing enough. You don't have enough strength. Read. That you may be able to withstand in the evil day. You got to have that armor to withstand, man. Because what we, that should also go back to the preparation part. You don't put on armor not to do no battle. That's right. The church ain't got nothing. They talking about put on the armor of the Most High and then they eat pork. <laughs> you ain't doing nothing. That ain't nothing. You put on armor for battle. That's what armor's for. To do battle. You ready to do damage. And hopefully you prepare. Because you can get that armor beat off. You get the brakes beat off you spiritually. Many of our people getting the brakes beat off them. I know if Kalak hits you with one of them knuckles, you're going to know it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, hopefully we won't have to physically beat the brakes off of nobody. But spiritually, we're going to get beat up if we don't understand this discipline right here. Spiritual analogies to convey, a uh, physical analogy to convey spiritual truth. Read. And having done all to stand. To stand. That's that. You're going to need that spiritual discipline to stand. Give me a... Uh, is that the end of that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, give me Ephesians 6.13, that's it. And I, I go into part two. That was it. But, uh, but uh, a lot. Romans 13 and 12. Okay. Yeah, Romans 13 and 12. The book of Romans, chapter 13 and verse 12. 
The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Read it again. The night is far spent. Mm -hmm. The day is at hand. The day is now, man. Come on. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let's cast off the works of darkness. This is how you get that discipline, man. Come on. And let us put on the armor of light. Armor of light. Read on. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness. Mm. Not in chambering and wantonness. Come on. Not in strife and envy. Come on. But put ye all, put ye on the master Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, and make not provision for the flesh Hallelujah. to yeah. fulfill the lust, lust thereof. Yeah. So with, with that, I say Shalom. Shalom.